So you are given a table and you are said that consider the database that has the relation schema M EMP having the columns emp ID, emp name and department name, an instance of the schema emp and an SQL query is given to you. This is the SQL query and this is the instance and you have to find out the output after executing the SQL query. So it is a numerical type question, no options are provided and you have to find the output. Okay, so starting with the query, the query says select average AVG ec.num from ec where depth name or department name comma num in select depth name comma count of emp id as ec depth name num from m group by depth name okay so this entire query consists of two parts this is part one and this is part two okay this is the inner query so whenever you have such a query a query within a query or a nested query you first see what is the output of the inner query okay and then depending on the inner query you find the output of the outer query so starting with the inner query what we are told is we have to select department name comma the count of employee ids and we have to give the name to these two columns as EC. EC would be the name of the new table resulting from the uh, resulting after executing this inner query and the name of the two columns depth name would be depth name and num. The count of employee ID would be renamed to num and we have to select these columns from the employee table. This is the employee or the EMP table and we have to group by since you know that count requires a group by clause so while performing the count operation we have to group by the department name so basically for each department we have to find out the count of the number of employees in that department so the output of the inner query would be the inner query would result in a table named EC as written here having the columns department name and num okay num represents the number of employees all right now start we start filling up this table so what is the department name different department names that are present in this EMP table are double A A B AC and AD AE. So starting with a, double A or AA, total number of employees in double A department is 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so there are 4 occurrences here and there are 4 employees. So in AB department, we have 1, 2, 3 employees. Similarly, if we calculate, you will find out AC also has 3 employees. AD has two employees and AE department has a single employee. So this table is the result of the inner query. Now after we have calculated the output of the inner query, we go to the outer query and we see what it is asking. It asks us to find the average of the column EC.num, this column from this table ec where department name dot num in this so basically for all the columns or all the rows sorry for all the rows department name comma num that are present in the output of the inner query we have to find out the average of the column num so the average would be 4 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 divided by the total number of call the total number of values that you have included in the average which is 5 all right so this would come out to be 13 divided by 5 and that is 2.6 okay so the answer that you will be writing in the question provided is 2.6 so this is not a difficult question you just have to keep in mind that instead of starting with the outer query and then going to the inner query start from the innermost query and then proceed by solving the outer queries one by one so then 
the question reads as a database of research articles in a journal uses the following schema volume number start page end page title year and price so these are all the attributes of the schema or all the columns of the schema and the primary key is volume number start page end page so let's write the short form of all these so if i denote the the attributes as v for volume n for number start page stands or s stands for start page e for end page t for title y for year and p for price so these are all the columns and the primary key given to you is this okay four columns volume number volume number start page and end page and the following functional dependencies exists the functional dependencies are volume number start page and end page that means the entire primary key specifies title okay or title is specified by the primary key then volume and number specify year then volume number start page and end page again it is a primary key and it specifies the price column then the database is redesigned to use the following schema so this was the original schema this had all these columns together in a single original schema and the new schema would be it consists of two tables having different columns the above all the columns are partitioned into two parts volume n for number start page end page title and price and we have separated year and combined it with volume number and year okay so this is the new schema so what you have to tell here is which is the weakest normal form that the new database satisfied but the old one does not so what do you mean by the weakest normal form weakest normal form means the least normal form that is satisfied by the new database schema but it was not uh, it was not satisfied by the previous old schema the lowest normal form okay so first we have to find out the normal forms the uh, the 1nf 2nf or 3nf that was satisfied by the original schema so in the original schema as you can see that since vnse is the primary key so the prime attributes are v n s and e what are prime attributes prime attributes are the attributes that are part of the primary key and non prime attributes are those that are not a part of primary key okay so non prime attribute here is title year and price so 1nf specifies that each value should be a single value in each row okay so we generally do not check for 1nf unless and until we have multiple values in each row and each column okay so starting with 2nf 2nf the constraint 2nf says that no non prime attribute should be partially dependent on primary key or on a candidate key so basically non prime attribute should not be specified by a part of the candidate key so when we say candidate key we also mean primary key okay so non prime attributes are title year and price title is being specified by the complete primary key v l s and e then price is being specified by the complete primary key v n s and e now let's talk about year year is a non prime attribute but it is being specified or it is being defined by a part of the primary key which is volume and number okay so a non prime attribute is dependent on a part of a key and therefore this schema is only in 1nf because of this because of this dependency it is not satisfying 2nf 
this original schema is only in one NF. All right. So now let's study the new schema that we are given. In the new schema, definitely the original primary key would be the same V, N, S and E. And here since title and price both are completely dependent on the original primary key. So this schema or this table is in 2NF also v n and y where the primary key is v comma n and y is completely dependent on the primary key this is also in 2nf so we need not check for further normal forms because 2nf is the least normal form or the weakest normal form that is satisfied by this new schema and was not satisfied by the previous old schema so the answer is 2nf so why we did not check for 3NF and BCNF because th even if the schema, the new schema would have been in 3NF or BCNF, we have to tell the weakest normal form. That means the smallest or the lowest normal form that was not in the original schema and is specified by or is fulfilled by the new schema. So the answer is 2NF. So uh, not at all a difficult question from database topic. You need to know what each normal form demands from a database schema and then you'll be able to solve such questions very easily. In this question, you are given a database named water schemes and the table or the database consists of three columns, scheme number, district name and capacity. And you have to find out the number of tuples that would be returned by the combined query that is given to you. Now this query, if you notice carefully, consists of three parts. The first line is with total name comma capacity as select district name comma sum of capacity from water schemes group by district name. Now this is one query. After you have executed this query, you will come to the next query which is with total underscore average capacity as select average capacity from total and this is the second query. This the second query ends here. The third query begins from here and goes till the last line which says to select name from total comma total underscore average where total dot capacity is greater than equal to the total underscore average dot capacity. So executing the first query, you have to maintain or you have to find out or uh, make a table named total having the columns name and capacity. And what would that table contain? It would contain district name and the sum of the capacity from this given table which the in which the, the groups would be on the basis of the district name. So basically you have to select district names and for each district name you have to find the sum of all the capacities that are present corresponding to the names. So for each district name there would be a single entry. So the result of the first query would be The name of the table would be total. The column names would be name and capacity. All right. So this is the table. So the first name that would occur would be Ajmer. The total capacity of Ajmer would be 20 because it is written sum of capacity so it would be 20 here the next name that would occur would be Bikaner since there are multiple entries for Bikaner so we'd, we would sum all the values 10 plus 10 plus 20 which would give you a total of 40 next comes Churu corresponding to Churu again there are two entries 20 plus 10 which gives you 30 and the last entry is Dungargar. So Dungargar corresponding entry, a single value which is 10. So this is the output of the first query. Now coming to the second query with total underscore average of capacity as 
select average of capacity from total so basically this is the total database or to a table or a relation whose name is total and from this you have to find out the average of the capacity column and the result would be named as total underscore average of capacity so basically the result of the second query would be we would have the value total underscore average of capacity and this would contain a single value okay this value would be calculated by finding the average of all these values the average is 20 plus 40 plus 30 plus 10 divided by 4 which comes out to be 100 divided by 4 4 because there are 4 entries and the final result would be 25 so this value total underscore average capacity would be 25 now coming to the third query the result of the final and the third query would be select name from total comma total average where total dot capacity is greater than total underscore average dot capacity okay so basically you have to find out all these names for which the capacity present in the table total is greater than the average capacity that we have to calculate that means if for a particular district the capacity value is greater than 25 then we will include it into the result of the final query so let's find out the result of the final query we have to select name so there would be a column with name and what would be the values Ajmer has a capacity of 20 it is less than 25 so it would not be included Bikaner would be included because 40 is greater than 25 then Churu would also be included because again 30 is greater than 25 and Tungargar would not be included. So this is the final table that would result from the three queries and you have to tell the number of tuples returned by the following SQL query. So the answer is 2. 2 tuples would be returned. So this is not a difficult question. You have to be careful about what is being asked and what comparisons are being done. So that's all for today's lecture. Thank you for watching the video. Stay tuned to our channel of Easy Engineering Classes for more lectures on computer science related subjects and our preparation series for various computer science related exam. If you understood the question, please mention it in the comment section below and like this video and share it with your friends. Thanks again. Good luck. Stay tuned.